Legendary fly tire Bob Clouser invented the deep minnow in the mid-1980s, and found the sparse fly was incredibly effective for smallmouth bass on the Susquehanna River, his home waters. The Clouser deep minnow is simple and easily customized. Today, fly fishing anglers tie the Clouser minnow, and variations of it, on a variety of hook sizes and types, depending on the target species and type of water. The belly and back are tied with various color combinations of bucktail accented by a length of flash. Lead, brass or tungsten eyes provide the weight to animate the fly and get it down in the water column, where it behaves much like a conventional jig. A popular version is the half and half, which shares elements of the deep minnow and lefty's deceiver, created by Bob Clouser's longtime friend, Lefty Cray. Gary Rowland, with full disclosure, will be tying Bob's Clouser minnow just as he demonstrated on his YouTube video. The materials needed for this pattern will be listed in the description section seen just below this video. Simply scroll down on you viewing device. Let's join Gary now. Go! Today we're going to be tying a, a Bob Clouser minnow. Uh, this is a, a pattern that was invented by Bob Clouser. He originated the pattern and it's a very, very popular pattern. It can be used in a variety of colors. It can be used in freshwater or saltwater for a variety of species. Uh, if you go on YouTube, you can see Bob tying this. He does a lot better job of it than, than I do. But you'll see a lot of other tires that have some variations to his pattern. And since we're tying a pattern called a Bob Clouser pattern, I would like to use his methods to to show the, the class here how Bob would tie this pattern. Uh, this pattern will introduce a new material, a bucktail material. It's essentially the tail off of a, a white-tailed deer, and it comes in a, a variety of colors, gray, blue, white, chartreuse, red, brown. But for our pattern today, I'm going to be using one that Bob uses a lot. I'll be using white and chartreuse. So, uh, I, think, I think you'll find this uh, an interesting pattern, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Today we're going to be tying a Bob Clouser minnow. Bob Clouser is a, a famous angler, a fly fisherman, and innovative fly tire that created this, uh, this fly. Uh, it can be used in both fresh and salt water. Uh, very much used for uh, uh, inland fishing for snook and tarpon, and it's also an effective smallmouth fly. There are a lot of variations of this pattern on YouTube, but uh, we're going to be tying a fly called the Clouser Minnow, so I want to tie it like Bob ties it on his YouTube's uh, features. This pattern will use a, a bucktail, which is no more than a white-tailed deer tail. And uh, it, these are examples of color. It comes, bucktail comes in a variety of, of colors. Right in the middle, yeah, right in your chest. Uh, and these are the two that we're going to be using today, white and chartreuse. You would, ideally, you want to use the, the upper third of the bucktail for streamer patterns like this, if the nearer you get to the rump of the deer, the more hollow the individual uh, hair lengths are, and uh, when you try to constrict them, they will flare. The top third is not nearly as susceptible to flaring, which makes it a little bit easier to, to tie this pattern. Uh, So with that introduction, let's let's tie a Clouser minnow. Here's an, a, a, an example of a of a Clouser that that I've tied. Uh, you can use a, a variety of hooks as well. This is a size uh, four uh, TMC 811S. Um, and I'll be tying the pattern today using that hook. The first thing we're going to need to do is uh, tie a little bump on the hook shaft 
which we use as a way to kind of get our barbell eyes located in the, in the right distance from the eye of the hook. And one thing that I have started doing that Bob doesn't do, uh, sometimes, especially on a smaller hook that doesn't have nearly as wide a shank, I, can some, I sometimes will struggle a little bit getting the uh, barbell in place. I found that if you use a, some UV cement and a UV light, uh, that kind of helps me attach this barbell. And you notice I've got it quite a ways away from the eye of the hook, and that's, that's very important for this particular fly. So I am going to make a wrap or two, and then I'm going to put a little bit of UV goop right at the base of that and that will help me, I've got it all over my finger and I want it behind my my little bulge and I'm gonna shoot that with my UV flashlight and that, and that solidifies then I have a lot a lot less trouble keeping my barbell and getting my barbell in place uh, on the hook shank. And there's quite a bit of distance between the eye and the, the barbell location and that's, that's intentional and it's kind of critical to the way uh, Bob Clouser ties his patterns. And I'm going to, I've got it about the position I want. It's not locking in quite yet, but I'm going to do some uh, figure eights. And then I'm going to go all the way around the, the bottom as well. And try and make sure I've got the eyes locked in where I want them. Then I'm going to let a thread base down to the eye and then I'm going to go back about halfway and I'm going to leave my thread hanging at that halfway point. And you can tell I've got my eyes pretty well squared away here. And the first thing we're going to attach is some uh, white bucktail. One of the one of the most common mistakes that you can make on this fly is uh, using too much bucktail. And you're going to see that it's, it, it's a pretty sparse. I'm going to cut my bucktail off. And I'm going to start with a pretty good wad of this. But I'm going to trim that down. I'm going to be grabbing near the tip. I'm going to pull out all the short hairs and I'm, I'm getting the bulk of my fly reduced considerably. If I have some on the other end that are sticking out conspicuously, you know, I would be pulling those out too. But I'm going to end up with, as you can see, pretty sparse clump of, of deer hair here. And I've got a few more that I want to get rid of here. Okay, that's getting, uh, that's getting pretty close. A couple more that stragglers I want to get out of there. And I'm going to take a look at the length I need for this and I need about a length and a half of the hook length hook shaft behind the bend so that's looking to me it may uh, just pretty close if it's a little bit longer that doesn't seem to cause a problem and I've trimmed that off square I'm going to squeeze that so that my bucktail is in a kind of a vertical clump 
and I'm going to try and get this attached. I'm going to make an, an easy wrap. And I'm going to try and make sure my wraps are 90 degree to the bucktail. I've got a couple of easy wraps there. Then I'm going to layer that in. And if you do this correctly, you will not have an ugly head on your, on your fly. And I'm leaving some space between the, the barbell and the uh, bucktail. And I'm doing that on purpose. Now I'm going to go behind the bucktail and then I'm going to get to the other side of my barbell and I'm going to tie that in but I'm not going to tie it in real close to the eyes I'm going to leave I'm going to leave a little space when I tie that in I'm still gripping that vertically trying to make the clump kind of vertical and I'm going to tie that in down to where the bend starts. You don't have a whole lot here uh, with the hook. The, the hook is pretty short, but this this will work fine. So I'm going to bring my thread back. I'm going to bring it up to the front. Leave it about halfway between the eye and the barbell eyes, and I'm going to tie a not pull my material in place. Now you can either, uh, a lot of people here will take the hook out and try and get the hook upside down. Which I'm going to try to do. That messing up our materials too much. Come on. Okay. I'm going to grab that. Now one of the nice features of this Clouser pattern is we put the eyes on the top of the hook so that the pattern as it's gone through the water will be much more weedless like this because it will it'll go through the water in this position. The next thing we're going to put on we use some uh, midge flash here. Bob says six or eight strands so it's not you don't have to be so critical that you have to get the exact number I've got some crooked ones here. I'm going to get rid of them. I'm down to probably six or eight. And I'm going to trim one end. And then I'm going to bring that behind the thread. Grab it. Bring that up. I'm going to try and get it tied in. Uh, uh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. I'm going to bring that behind the thread. Grab it. Get a good get hold of it. I'm going to bring that up, and I'm going to tie that in. You got to split the difference on your hook. And I can go ahead and trim that now. I'm going to trim that about the length of my my deer hair. And now we're ready to tie on the the wing. And I'm using a chartreuse here. Bob has tied a lot of them in this white and chartreuse. I would think it would make a great smallmouth bass bait. So I'm going to trim off a chunk of that. And we're going to have to go through the same process we did before. 
sparse is, is better than too full. But Bob says you can put a little bit more on the wing than you did on the bottom to kind of fill it out a little bit. And I've got about the same amount, maybe a little bit more. But I'm going to measure that for length. And then I know about where I've got to cut that off. I'm going to lay that up on top, a bit at an angle. I'm going to go back to my halfway point. That point gets in the way and it's sharp. And I'm going to lay that over, try and get 90 degrees to it, and cinch that in. And here, if it's a little, little long, you don't want to cover up the eye of your hook, you can pull that back. And I'm going to tie that in. And now I'm going to just try to cover up the chartreuse with my white thread. And it forms a very nice, neat head. And I'm going to whip finish that off. Trim that. And I like to uh, cover this with my UV. And I also like to cover the other side. this down in my vise a little bit so it's more level. I also want to cover the, the bottom side where I've tied it in. And there we have a Clauser minnow. There's a, a Clauser minnow.